They were 2-0 uh, with Mitchell Trubisky as their quarterback. Then they had a third game of the season against Atlanta, which they ultimately won because Nick Foles came in and saved the day because Mitchell Trubisky did not look that great. And we understand that. But if you remember back at that time when they had elected to start him the very next game, I think it was against Indy, if I remember correctly. What I said then is what I still what still holds true now. I said Nick Foles coming into a game late in the season and saving the day is different. When you ask him to be that guy, damn near from jump start, which means pretty early in the season, what you're going to do is jeopardize him. He's not going to have the durability necessary. He's going to get himself hurt. And in the meantime, you're going to just completely, I mean, Mitchell Trubisky's confidence is going to be shot. You're not going to be able to recover from this. And lo and behold, what has happened? Nick Foles proceeds to lose five of the next seven games. He ultimately gets hurt. Mitchell Trubisky has to come back in. And yesterday, he looked like he had absolutely no confidence whatsoever. No, he doesn't make the greatest decisions. And he damn sure ain't the greatest passer. And we understand that. But we also know that we saw better things from him when he was moving those wheels, when he was running with the football. And the reason why I hold Matt Nagy so accountable for that, Matt Nagy was not just a quality control coach. He was a quarterback's coach in Kansas City. He was a quality control coach and assistant in Philadelphia. He goes to Kansas City for four years. He's the quarterback's coach before he's the offensive coordinator in 2017. And then he gets the head coaching job with the Chicago Bears. Not only is offense supposed to be your thing, quarterbacks are supposed to be your thing. And somehow, some way, you've had ample time to at least put Mitchell Drabisky in a forward direction to have him looking better. And that has not been the case. So I think that he did ruin it with this move, and I think it's unfortunate. I'm not saying he should be fired or anything because this would be his first losing season if he were to have it. But I'm not high on the job that he has done this year with the Chicago Bears at all or the job that he has done with Mitchell Trubisky, Max, period. Nagy's move is not what cost the Bears their season. It ruined the Bears' season. Two things ruined the Bears' season. The Bears' offensive line is one, and the schedule was two. Let's go through this, Stephen A. Bears beat the Lions week one. Bad team. The Giants, who back then especially weren't playing as well as they're playing recently, bad team. That's two wins. As you said, Foles had to come in to get by the Falcons. Also, not a good team. These are all teams with losing records. And then Foles continues, and now they're playing the Colts. Colts are a very good team, and the Bears lose. But Foles helps them beat the Bucs, the heavily favored Bucs in the game that Brady forgot the downs. Foles threw the pass his team needed him to throw to get to field goal range. They kicked the field goal. They go ahead. Brady failed to do the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, the first time they met since Foles beat him in the Super Bowl. Now the next game, the Panthers. What happens? The Bears win. The Panthers, not a very good team. So far, whether the quarterback is Trubisky or Foles, they beat the bad teams, and they have one win against a good team authored by Nick Foles, okay? Now what happens? They play the Rams. They got pushed all around up front. They lost. Then the Saints. They lost by a field goal. Then the Titans. These are all excellent teams. And they lost. By the way, they were close competitive games, but they lost. No offensive line. Foles couldn't overcome it. Neither could Trubisky. I don't think it would have mattered who was quarterback, but Foles at least gave them a better chance. Then Foles got hurt in the Vikings game, which they lost. And now we see Trubisky against the Packers, lost just like Foles would have lost to the Packers. So without an offensive line, they weren't going to be very good. They have an awful offensive line. They weren't going to be very good. But what looked early, like maybe they're better than they were, was schedule. The only quarterback of, between the two to beat a good team was Nick Foles. He still gave them their best chance to win, even though he wasn't mobile and it was a bad line. And the fact that he got hurt, Yep, that could happen behind a bad offensive line. Could have happened to Drabisky, too. You do not put an immobile quarterback behind a bad offensive line when the reason you brought him there was to be ready as the season waned because you knew that your defense was elite enough that you'd have a good shot not only at the postseason but making noise in the postseason, particularly when you're finding a way to win football games. I have no problem with him taking Trubisky out of the game against the Atlanta Falcons and bringing Nick Foles in to win that third game of the season, which left them at 3-0. and 
but you put Mitchell Trubisky back in, and if you got to make musical chairs with it where you bring Nick Foles in for a fourth quarter or whatever to save the day for a few weeks, you do that. But you use Mitchell Trubisky as much as you possibly can because you want to give him every opportunity to, to elevate because you don't trust that Nick Foles is going to stay healthy because his history has proven that that's going to be an issue for him, not to mention the fact that you have a bad offensive line. That's where I'm coming from with that and, the, and to consider oh, sure. and to see the regression of a Mitchell Jabitsky when not only being an offensive coordinator and having an offensive background is what you have in Matt Nagy, but to play for, I mean, a coach four years as a quarterback's coach and to watch this kid continue to regress, I think it's unfortunate and I think it's on Nagy. Well, look, the Bears are five and six, right? So when you say it's not that your points are wrong, you're talking about what would optimizing strategy look like for the Bears. You bring Nick Foles in a game or two if you need to try to win the game, a game on the line, or if Trubisky's not playing well. And then toward the end of the season, if you're in striking distance, you bring in Foles because it, there's, there are fewer chances for him to get hurt. Stephen A., it wouldn't have mattered. Was, was Nick Foles going to beat the Packers last night, a healthy Nick Foles? No. They were going to lose to the Packers. The only difference, like, yes, Foles would be healthy now, but Trubisky would have lost to all the same teams. The only difference is they wouldn't have beaten the Bucs. They'd be a game worse than they are. So it's not that you're wrong in terms of optimizing Max. strategy or maybe don't put an immobile quarterback behind a bad offensive line. The point is that's not what ruined the season. The fact that they didn't have an offensive line and that their schedule got tough ruined the season. Well, Max, didn't you just finish saying that Nick Foles gives them the best chance to win? I didn't know. I wasn't aware that you're just going to automatically concede that if Nick Foles is in a the lineup, they're going to lose the game anyway. And if that's how you feel and you place such value with Nick Foles, why put him in that situation since you knew they were going to lose? Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.